This video answers the question, what is quant trading? And explains it in an easy way that even your grandma can understand. Defining quant trading in one sentence, using a mathematical model to engineer a statistical edge and executing it to create risk adjusted returns. At the heart of quant trading is the mathematical model. A model takes an input and produces an output. We usually denote the input as X and the output as Y. The model captures a relationship between X and Y. The goal of the model is to predict a future value of Y, which we denote as Y hat, given X. A model can have more than one input because there may be many influencing factors. When there are multiple inputs, we call it a multivariate model. More advanced models, such as neural networks, can also produce multiple outputs. For example, the model might predict at several time horizons, or even predict values for multiple assets at once. There are two main types of models, regression and classification. The most common type used in quant trading is regression. Regression models predict a numerical value. That number could be the future price. For example, the model predicts the future price will be $10.20. The model might instead predict the price change, the delta. Here, the model predicts the price will move down by $1.20. Or, the model could predict the return, the percentage change. Here, the model predicts the price will go up by 1%. The other type of model is the classification. Classification predicts what class it belongs to and gives a probability of it being in the class. For example, here the model predicts that it's going up with a 75% probability. This means that it believes the price will go up with a 75% chance. It could also predict that the price is going down. Here the model predicts that it's going down with an 80% probability. You might be wondering what exactly is passed into the model. The answer is a time series. A time series is simply an array of values ordered in time. The model predicts the future data point in the time series. For example, if the time series is daily prices, then the model will be predicting tomorrow's price. The strategy is responsible for the execution of the model's statistical edge. It takes the model's prediction, y hat, as input and converts it into orders. The strategy is as equally as important as the model. This means that the execution of the edge is equally as important as the edge itself. Let's look at an example. Let's say that the model receives an input which is a price return of minus 1%. The model predicts the future price return based on this input. It predicts that the price is going to move up by 0.5% in the future. This prediction is passed into the strategy and outputs an order based on this prediction. The strategy outputs a number that encodes both the trade size and direction. The trade size is 2.1, which means it should buy 2.1 units. The trade direction is encoded as the sign of the number, which is positive, so it represents going long, betting that the price goes up. Sizing a trade is very important for a strategy. If the trade size is too small, then it won't make any money. If the trade size is too big, then you can go bust, liquidated and be wiped out. The sweet spot is somewhere in between and it's considered a mathematical optimization problem. Let's look at another example. The current price return is 2% and is passed into the model. The model predicts the future price return based on this input. It predicts the future price will move down by minus 1%. The strategy receives this prediction and outputs a number. Again, this number encodes the trade direction and size. 
This time it is going short, based that it's a negative number. Going short means betting the price is going down. The trade size has been increased too. This is because it has reinvested the profits to increase the trade size. Reinvesting your money is known as compounding. The ultimate end goal of quant trading is to create risk adjusted returns. We can informally define it as returns over risk. Mathematically, it's represented as the expected value of returns over the standard deviation of returns. It quantifies how stable the returns are. Let's explain this visually. Say I have a time series of portfolio returns that provide a 40% return. Here you can see the portfolio returns are negative majority of the time. Now let's see another portfolio that also produces 40% returns, but are more stable. Here you can see the returns look more like a straight line. The more risk you reduce, the more your returns are stable and consistent. Which portfolio would you prefer to invest in? The green or red portfolio? Want to learn more? I've got three parts for you and you can see the cards above. First, my full theory course, Introduction to Quantitative Trading. Second, if you want to build a strategy from research all the way to implementation, check out my Let's Build series. Or third, if you're starting from zero, I have a free accelerator course that teaches programming, maths and machine learning step by step. All of these courses are made possible by my Patreon supporters, so thank you to them. Drop a comment with what you'd like me to explain next. I read every single one. And if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe for more videos like this.